to this week's episode of the Camogie Report podcast, brought to you by Tipperary Camogie TV. Um, I'm delighted to be joined uh, for our first part of the show by Enda Tracy, sports journalist, Cream Blair from Cash King Cormacs, and Sienna Welsh of Aero Organic Arty. Uh, we are going to preview the senior county final that's coming up this Saturday. Um, the FPD Insurance Senior Championship final between Drummond Inch and Clone Tier Osmore is happening at three o'clock on Saturday in the County Camogie Grounds in the Rag. Um, it's the third time both Clonty and Drum have met in the county final in the last three years. So a big rivalry after building up there. And I suppose it's going to be a really intriguing contest. And uh, to look at it a bit further, I'm delighted to have Enda, Crean and Sienna joining me. So we'll get right into it. Enda, we'll start off with you. Um, I know you know Drum and Inch and Clonty well at this stage from reporting on them. And uh, I know you reported at the semi-finals. Just after the semi-finals, who would you feel, I suppose, is in the better shape going into this final? Well, if you're just going by the previous few years, county finals, you'd, you'd imagine Drum are happy to be in the position they're in. Um, you know, they've done the job really, but in the first half, the last day, the three goals early in the game, you know, it was a, a great boost to them going into it when they were going to face a, a good a good stern challenge against their og. And, you know, it gives you a, a massive head start in the second half. They just had to keep tipping over their points and keeping them at arm's length. So, Look, they've played Canolty in a lot of matches and they've come out on top more often than not, so they're going to be in the best position going into the final. And Sienna, I suppose you know Drummond Inch very well at this stage. You've played them down through the years, but particularly, I suppose, in the group stages last year, again, uh, in the league, in the league um, and in the group stages and obviously in the semi-final. So do you, would you think Drum are stronger this year than other years or would you think they've gone back a bit or what kind of shape do you think they're in? I actually think they're stronger this year than they have been previously. Um, I think they brought in a few younger players. Uh, Caroline Shanahan, if I'm correct, is that her name? Wing forward, Neve yeah. Ryan, who's probably been unlucky not to start previous year. And, and there was another girl in the backs, um, Greedy, I think her name was. Only Greedy. And I think they've added a bit of something to it, um, a bit more pace up front. And then what's great about that, you have the likes of the experience, uh, Michelle Short and Joanne Ryan coming off the bench. Like, so if you're a t- tired cornerback and you see Michelle Short or Joanne Ryan coming on, like, it's it's not the greatest vision like for you. Very good, yeah. And Kareem, then I suppose, looking back on your semi-final then to, Ka- or to Clonty, I think, you know, it's probably two weeks have passed now at this stage. And, uh, like, reflecting back on it, like, you know, you've thrown everything at Clonty and, and, you know, you went ahead with the goal, but I suppose they just kept coming back at you and, and won out in the end. You know, thinking back on that match, do you think you left it behind or do you think Clonty were a better team or have you talked much about it since? Yeah, um, no, I don't think we left it behind. Um, I think in the end, both teams, we did give everything and it was just a puck of um, the ball in the end. Um, yeah, Clonty done well, like they stayed composed, like even when we got the goal and we came ahead, um, like we kind of thought we were like, we got the momentum, we'll keep going now, but they they didn't say freak or anything. They stayed composed and they were able to get one themselves and, you know, stay in the game. Um, and would yeah, you look back like, at it now and say you could have done something different that maybe would have changed the results or, you know, when it was so close? Um, I don't know. We Like we didn't walk away from it. Like we kind of left everything on the field and everyone kind of things that they did give it their all. So there isn't much regret from our side. Um, maybe just a bit of luck on the day. Um, Clonty were very good to kind of close us off. And I don't know, we feel like maybe if we'd done things a little differently, like changed positions maybe to try run through more. Um, on the day, Clonty were very good at stopping our plays. Like there wasn't much free flow around our forwards. Um, they were kind of going in packs, closing us down. So we didn't get much of our normal kind of shooting from like far out points or running through getting those scores um like everything we got we was it was hard work for um yeah. so yeah it, like I suppose if we played them on another day and it was the same scenario it could have gone the other way like even given maybe another five minutes it could have been a different result but no they did well to get it um in the end just when the final whistle went it went their way I suppose exactly yeah I suppose yeah. Ed, I'm always interested in the psychological side of things and wondering you know who has that advantage um you know drummer going for a four in a row they've beaten Clonty you know they've had the upper hand over them they've beaten them in the group stages um the drum have that psychological advantage then or Clonty with the hurt from the last three years um 
they sometimes they say it's very hard to be the same team twice in a year. You know, the, you know, there's so much community spirit out there and they're junior Bs one at the weekend. They're on a bit of a, on a roll. So who would you think has that advantage psychologically? Uh, Drum and Inch definitely have it. You know, you, you can't, you can't replace the, the habit of beating a team regularly, especially when it comes to beating them in big matches. Um, you know, Canality have been close on a couple of occasions, but probably just missing that one prolific forward to go caught. Um, look, even the last day she scored 11 points out of her 113, I think. Um, Casey Hennessy with 1 1. Other than that, Emer Burke got a point. So, you know, they have to spread the scores that Drum have. You know, Neve Tracy, since she's went in full forward there, she's she's been causing havoc. The last day she scored 2 1. Graham Campion's prolific as well. They just seem to have. Along with the prolific forwards they had, they had seemed to have that knack of winning big matches. And it's hard to replicate that um, when you don't have the habit of doing it. So, look, Drum will be going in its favours. But at the same time, Clonality have come close on a couple of occasions. And uh, they'll feel if they can keep it tight with the backs they have, Emer Lukeman, Courtney Ryan, Claude Quirk, if they can keep it tight at the back, they might be able to sneak it if Carl play as well. But, look, it's definitely in, in Drum Lynch's uh, favour at the moment. And Sienna, so like Kareen, they're talking, looking back on the semi final. I suppose a lot of people are wondering, you know, how come Anna Carty maybe didn't give the second half performance that they did in the first half? Could have been a different result, you know. Obviously, you're slow out with the traps. There must be regrets there uh, from your first half performance, or do you think you could have done things differently? Uh, yeah, you're always thinking you could have done things a bit differently. Um, but I think, Tom, actually, you really need to get the credit for the first even 15 minutes in the first half they came out with a plan and the, the plan worked like they just we just were we weren't really expecting um Neve Trassi in their full forward now being honest and um she calls havoc like that's it's fair to say she's she's in top form this year like we played them twice um in the championship and she was brilliant in the first game and once again brilliant in the semi um so like I think, yeah, the credit needs to go to them for that first fifteen minutes in the uh, in the first half. But at the same time, like I'm proud of what we did. Like we battled. We, like we went in nine points down at half time. And we brought back to five points at one stage. You know, if we, if we had got a goal, or they had got one less goal, it might have went any other. It could have been a different result. But we'll learn. We're still a young team, and we'll learn from it. And um, yeah, I was just delighted with how we finished it out at the end. Yeah, look, you played Clonty this year as well, you know, in the group stage as well. Yeah. I think you played them last year in the semi final as well. Do you would you think they're stronger this year? Obviously, they've Clona back, you know, and some of the younger yeah, players have more experience. I I watched the semi final on um uh, I catched up on the semi final on the YouTube on Sunday and um I thought she was brilliant in the semi final and she's a big addition back to them. And then they've kind of more younger players in there too. So I, I remember Kate Ferncombe today against so she did a lot of movement around and was causing a few problems. Um, but yeah, they are very good. But if they are going to win on Saturday, they need, like I was saying, they need, they can't be reliant on caught. They need maybe Casey Hennessy to be getting three or four points. Like they need Emer Burke to be chipping in with a few, Courtney Ryan to be chipping in with a few. Um, because Drum have that big range, like they've Ian McGrath, Miriam Campion, Anne Eviston, um, Neve Trassy, Mary Burke, like they get such a spread of score, they have such a spread of scores. Um, so Clonty really need really need some of their big players to step up um if they are to pull off the win. Okay. And Kareen, then I suppose obviously you know a lot of the drum and Clonty players from playing against them and playing with them as well with tip. Who, who yeah. would you say, you know, Sienna mentioned a lot of them there, but who would you think are the real key players for Drum and, and for Clonalty, the ones that I suppose are going to be match winners, maybe? Um, well, I with Clonalty, just starting off, say, I'd say Con is obviously going to be a huge player. Um, she's always going to be present on the field, just with her experience and the free-taking, um, and it's always a good way to get into the a match early, do you know, that kind of a thing. Um, so between um, Cod and Courtney, um, Courtney in midfield kind of guiding it through and Cloda as well being back. She'll be a big presence in the backs along with Emer Lukeman. Um, and then obviously you've Casey up front. Um, so they'll kind of be the main ones kind of guiding it through the field, but then obviously the younger ones will all come into play to finish it with them. Um, in regards to drum, there's 
Um, in regards to drum, you've two McGraths. They're always going to be tipping around. There's an Aoife in the back, Emer in the forward. Um, you've Marie Eviston, Anne Eviston, Miriam. Um, I mean, the Lee Tracy, like there's key players, yeah, yeah. There's there's just the two of them have mountains of players like on both sides that are gonna gonna shine through for them and all with plenty of experience and plenty of matches behind them. And and I suppose if if like you kind of suppose you mentioned it there, if Drum are to win, you know, what do you think they need to do or you mentioned I um, what I think, they need to do. Yeah, I think if Drum need to win on the day, they can't be complacent. Um and take the match for granted. They can't be seeing, say, maybe the Munster already. They need to be really focusing on this match and focusing on Clonulty because Clonulty are a very strong side and they can't take them for granted. Um, so do you need to turn up on the day and really give um, Clonulty a good rattle and, you know, see then? And Corrine, if, if, if Clonulty are to win on the day, then what, what do they need to do, I suppose? Um, I think Clonulty do have a lot of experience. Like, since they played against them, say, the last maybe three years in the final, they need to kind of maybe be looking back on that and seeing where they've fallen down the last couple of years and seeing where they can fix things and progress in the future. Like these are two teams that know each other very well. So they're, I suppose both teams are going to try and pick and choose where they can improve on from the last day. Um, and Clonty really just kind of need to come into it with confidence as well and not be scared or not, um, yeah, not stand back off drum because drummer are going to have the confidence anyway, having beaten them previously. So, yeah, Clonty just need to be confident and use that confidence then to drive forward. Good. And then uh, Crean made, uh, made a good point there about drum, you know, being, maybe to make sure not, they're not complacent, they're looking at Munster. Could that be Could that be an issue with drum? Because, you know, obviously, I know they were very disappointed losing the Munster final last year and having having uh, contested in that Ireland semi-final, you know, even just... I think it was only months previous or weeks even. I can't remember now with the delayed championship and all that. So do you think maybe they are maybe a bit focused on Munster and could that be could that catch them? I wouldn't say so. You know, they've they've been on the wrong end of a rivalry there a few years back when they were trying hard to get past Burgess to Harrow for a long time. So, you know, they'll they'll be aware of the the mindset can only are going to come into the game with. Um look, they'll want to be winning as many county titles as they can while they're at their peak. Um, you, like you can't be looking past any team, especially a Clonty team that have pushed them hard in the last few finals. Um, look, they won't be complacent about it. These games aren't won um, on paper; they're not won by results from the past or or won on the day. So, look, they won't be complacent about it. I don't think. And Sienna, is there is there any particular battle, maybe your aspects of the game that you're looking forward to? Is there any duels or or watching how something plays out? I suppose in relation to duels, um. I caught has started all the matches nearly wing forward, so uh, like Eve McGrath will be picking her up, so I think that'll be massive. Like they they probably be well used to each other from playing with each other in county too. Like they'll probably mark each other a good bit in there too, so that'll be big. But what I'd be really interested to in see is um how can Olty manage if Neve Tracy is in full forward, you know will they kind of have to play a sweeper maybe and kind of sacrifice go even if they just play a sweeper in the first 10 minutes um kind of do, do you think drum could do that again or is that kind of that um that, you wouldn't see why they wouldn't do it when it works so well for the semi-final <laughs> um but at the same time canolty will have obviously watched back the game and will be prepared for it too so you know more than likely she won't get the space that she got maybe in, in the first 15 minutes against us. Um, but to prevent, like, they might have to play a sweeper, even if it is for the first 10, 15 minutes when they kind of try to win the game. Um, but like I said, that's preventing them kind of attacking then going forward because you might be dropping Cloda back to sit right in front of her and you're dropping Courtney Ryan, Courtney Ryan can obviously score a few long range points, so you'd kind of like her going forward a bit, but she might have to sacrifice it, because if, I I think if Drum don't get the, like the goals they got against us, or even if they can keep them without a goal in the first half, I think, you know, anything could happen then really, because 
like Canolty do have players like they've Casey Hennessy, like I played against her in both football and Camogie this year, like and she's playing serious stuff in both of them. Like, you know, she's a real threat. And then caught obviously on the freeze has been mag- magnificent and on play and Corny Ryan. Um so I think the big thing for Canolty is try and prevent Strum from getting a goal in the first half. And I think anything could really happen after then. Because Drum will be worried, kind of, you know, their second half performance against us, they died, they died a bit. And it was actually the same last year. I remember being at the county final last year. Um, they went in with a good lead in the first half and Canolte came right back at them in the second half. And if it wasn't Ricky Cueva Burke making a great save then, Canolte could have won the game. So, um, yeah, I, I'll just be interested to see how that works out. Yeah, I was just thinking of the same thing myself. And uh, I think you... You seem to be favouring Drum and, and, and thinking it's in their hands. But, you know, as Sienna mentioned there as well, like, you know, they they caught Mr. Penalty last year in the county final. That would have put them ahead with time nearly up. And I think Casey got a goal disallowed. She seems to be coming into the final in a flying form and she caused Drum a lot of trouble last year, scored a goal, another goal disallowed. So I, I, I just go for your predictions there. Are you, are you sticking with Drum or are you expecting a close game or could Cologne do it? I feel like Knowlty will have to score a couple of goals to be in a chance of winning it. I just don't think they're going to be able to score enough with just Cots, um, Freeze and her scores from play. And I suppose, Crean, over to you then for your predictions. Who do you think will win this Saturday's FPD Insurance Senior Championship final and maybe why? Um, I'd say probably Drum. It'll take a lot from Knowlty's side to kind of beat their experience and when you're on a winning streak it is hard to overcome that so unless Tenolte starting to peep through at the end um, I'd say Drum will probably take the win this time. And Sienna what about you then who, who are you predicting or what kind of final are you expecting? Yeah it's, it is kind of hard to look past Drum like they like I said um, earlier they seem to be better nearly this year than they have been in previous years Um. I agree with him that when he says Knowlty are going to need goals. But at the same time, the drum backs have been so strong this year. We we didn't get that goal in the semi-final. So it would be very hard to break down that back line. Um so yeah, unfortunately, I would I think it is kind of Knowlty's time and you never know really. But I just feel they just have that bit too much for for Knowlty and yeah, it's, yeah, I'll go with Drum. Okay, we'll have to wait and see if how your predictions hold up. But uh, I think we're all in agreement uh, respecting a very good final and uh, a close competitive game. And so many excellent players will be on show. Um, just to encourage everyone to get to the County Camogie Grounds, the RAG, and this Saturday at 3 p.m. for the FBD Insurance Senior Championship Final. Drum and Inch against Clonty Ross Moore. I wish both clubs the very best luck and we look forward to a cracking final. Uh, to end the Crean and Sienna, thanks very much for being my guests this week on the Camogie Report podcast. Now for the next part of the podcast, I'm delighted to be joined by David Sullivan from Laura and Bridget Burke of Drum and Inch uh, to look back on all the action from the weekend. Uh, David, Bridget, thanks very much for joining me. Thanks very much, Adam. You're not, you're not fed up with talking Camogie yet after your marathon commenting session there with the Boris Lee and Killer One game, you're, you're you're eager to do a bit more talking here tonight. I suppose it's uh, it it <laughs> <laughs> So well, look, we'll start off with Saturday and we had the two FBD insurance intermediate semi-finals, two totally different games, I thought. The first game, even though they were both close and exciting, there was a real kind of bite and better intensity, I suppose, to the second game. The first game was maybe a bit like a like a chess match, um, more so. Newport, I thought, against the wind. Bridget, I know you watched this. Newport played, you know, they had Kira Fly back as a sweeper. Um, kind of Grace O'Toole was up there, I suppose, on her own, I suppose, and in the forwards. And, you know, Shan Rovers were a bit slow to get going, but, you know, I think they went maybe three points up but, um, before, I think it was 26 minutes before, before Newport scored. But the wind was a factor in the game, would you, would you agree? Huge factor, because there was a few wides and there was a few... Um, clearances that fell short, but there was a lot of shots that would normally, you know, hit probably, you know, be score in scorable um, distances anyway. 
that um, fell short and were either cleared or, you know, um, were let back back up the field again. It wasn't, uh, it was a pity because it probably, it had a promise to be a great game, you know. And I suppose another big I, factor, obviously, I, I was, was Saoirse McGrath being injured, you know, Newport's captain and I suppose one of their main players and their main leaders. She obviously dislocated her shoulder against Kilowan the last group game. So she was a huge loss for Newport and I think they felt her loss. I would say so. And I'd say, you know, she steadied the ship around her as well, which was uh, probably, you know, uh, it's a great skill, to be honest. And, the, you know, she was sorely missed there. Um, like she does, she does an awful lot of work off the ball as well. You know, um, she's very good to read a game. And, um, yeah, she was, she was, it was, it was a pity because I'd seen them in one of the earlier rounds and, you know, where they had started the year maybe not so good but they they kind of they got better as the, as with every match they played and um i i actually um i thought they they, they would get to the final now to be honest you know i thought they were one of the teams i thought was would be there thereabouts you know yeah, and I know in the second half, Shannon Roberts bought out Aoife Malachny. She won a lot of frees. Um, and I suppose when Grace O'Toole got the goal for Newport, they didn't really kick on from there. And Aoife's frees, you know, bought them ahead. And I suppose it was it was very tough on Newport there at the end. Emma Flanagan White had a great game, did a huge amount of work. She had a chance to, to take it to extra time. I'd say the shot, it must have been centimetres wide. And then they had a free after that. And in fairness, Aoife Shinners came up from the goals. And didn't get the connection. I'm sure she would have liked, and just fell short. So, you know, the final score was Shannon Rovers ten points, Newport Ballon Hinge one six. So it was heartbreaking, really, for for Newport. But yeah. a really hard fought victory for Shannon Rovers, and they dug deep, really, didn't they? Oh, they did, yeah. And like you know, I mean, you have like you know, Aoife and Beanie out the field. You know, they they and seeing Gain in there, like, and this um um. There's a couple of other girls. The girl, the um, um I can't think of her first name. E is it Emer Fogarty? I, I, yeah, Emer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like they're nice players. You know, they've they've like you can't beat the the cleverness of Beanie and, and um and Aoife because they they are, they're always where you want them to be and they they read the game as good as anyone I've ever seen. You know, so and of course Aoife is very is ever very accurate with her freeze and everything. So. You know they're they're like they'll take beating as well. You know what I mean? They they like they're they're you know conditions. You know Saturday weren't as bad, of course, as Sunday. But you know there was it was still heavy underfoot at the same time. You know, um. So I I I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, I think they'll be there thereabouts as well. You know they're yeah. They good and obviously players, then they're like, opposition. You know, and they're going to win the goals, of course, as well. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, key oh, players all over the field. You know, their yeah. opposition then on Saturday will be a court or a Saturday week is of course Bursley after they got over the line eventually against uh, Kilowan McDonough's. Um, a, a fantastic game of Camogie, huge drama and highly entertaining. Final score Bursley 217 to Kilowan McDonough's 4 8. David, I suppose you've had a bit of time to think back over this game. Your thoughts and reflections after this match? Uh, well, I suppose look, it was it was clear to everyone the win was a huge a, a huge advantage to Kilowan in the in the first half and they made full use of it. They were seven points up at half time and probably full value for that seven points. Bursley were struggling under their their own puckouts to win ball and Avril Ryan was struggling centre back and I suppose Julianne was getting lots of off Laura Shinners inside and Leanna Kelly was kind of going to town for Kilowan as well on Need McGrath. But I suppose like all good teams, Bursley hung in there to half time and they got a couple of scores just coming up to. The break, um, Aideen Hogan, obviously one of the standout players on on show last Saturday, kind of kept them in the game in the first half with their freeze and um, they got into half time and they readjust things and I think it actually helped in the second half that uh, Laura Shinners came out to the half forward line because it suited Julianne to come out as well and she kind of threw off the shackles and Teresa Ryan moved back into the backs as well and shored it up and Avril kind of came to life and she came up the field as well and you know, the two Fitzgeralds um, just having Mark Terry and Katie were outstanding. Then they grew into the game and Neve McGrath kind of got a hold of Leanne Kelly inside in the one-on-one -on -one battle. And 
Emma Maher came to life as well in full forward. So Ava Beeman's made also made a huge difference and she came on as well. So whereas Lee really thundered into it in the second half. And uh, but in fairness, Kayla Wan just stood at their task and they were had some fantastic performers on the day as well. And then obviously we had extra time and extra, extra time. But I think in the end, to be honest, I think Borsley were deserving winners. Um, and that's not to take away from Killer One's performance at all. I, I thought they brought a lot to the game on um, on Saturday, but just probably ran out of steam. And I think when, when Laura ran out of steam as well, I think Killer One's challenge kind of faded a little bit. You know, Laura was causing havoc inside with her power and, and um, straight line running when she got the ball, but she kind of t- tired as the game went on and kind of when her... Um, influence went out of it. I think Killer One kind of went out of it as well. But the battle the way, but I just thought maybe as the game went on and uh, Bursley were deserving winners, but you know, they they will need to improve on the first half of performance uh, in the county final because I know Shannon Rovers probably wasn't at their best um uh, against Newport on, on Saturday, but they have the experience of the last two county finals behind them. So you know, both teams will have to do a bit of improving. I know the Rovers won't be terribly happy. I know a few of them personally, and I know the likes of Vincent McKenna, the manager and the manager of Channel Rovers, won't be happy with the way the semi final went on uh, on Saturday against Newport. So they will improve in the next few weeks. So, you know, while Bursley will be on a high with their performances um, as the game went on, they certainly will need to improve in the first half because if they give Shannon Rovers a seven point head start, it could be impossible to maybe pull it back two games in a row. So, um, full full value for the victory in the end, but certainly made work work very hard for it by a very strong Kilo One team who maybe just in the end ran out of steam. And I think Bursley overall are probably deserving winners at the end of a, of a titanic struggle. I must say it was a, quite an enjoyable game of Camogie. It had everything: two sendings off, you know, a great free taking on both sides, uh, great defending. I think there was a one stage within. A minute after Ryan made a, a heroic block down to stop Killer One win the one end of the field, and then Mary Walsh turned around 30 seconds later and caught a ball under tremendous pressure at the far end of the field. So it had a bit of everything, but um, I kind of said in commentary was probably one of the best intermediate semi finals that was played in, in the pitch, and I stand by that. I think it was just it was a high quality game of Camogie, everyone gave it their all, but I think at the end, um, the best team won, uh, just about. Yeah, great summary there from David. Uh, Bridget. I suppose one thing that stands out for me, you know, as well, you know, the positives that Bursley can take from it, but, you know, there were seven points down at half time, but uh, Kilowan got a goal early in the second half. I think Bursley went nine points down. And I think many teams would have thrown in the towel there and then, but Burris actually responded with two goals. Um, there's obviously a great bond there and, and great heart in that group and faith in the players and in the management and whatever was there going into that um. Saturday's match, I think, is probably double now for for the final. And were you surprised that they that they were able to come back from that kind of lead? That I wasn't really, to be honest, because um, I, I I obviously um I I'd follow Burst League Camogie as well um fairly closely, and um, I've seen some of those girls underage um like you have to remember um probably three. You know, three of probably some of the standout players on the day are under 16. You have Ava Beavens come in as a sub, she's under 16. Aoife Fitzgerald, who had a master game, is still under 16. And so is Emma Maher. And, um, you know, like they've had, they're after coming up from the ranks um, underage. And also, um, I think, you know, they, they had Nicole Walsh um, to play this year, which I thought was going to be a huge loss to them up front. But the others have stepped up in fairness, you know, and I think, um, you know, they, they they held down their backs fairly well. Like, um, I do think um, Julianne definitely was better, which we even said that in our in our commentary. I We would have brought Julianne out earlier because I know she was probably man-marking um, Laura Shinners, but um, when, when they brought Laura out and Julianne came out, it changed the whole dynamic altogether because they... Um, ever pushed up a uh, step as well and she she came into her own as David said there um, out the field you know she had more space to move around and Julianne then just shored up of it, everything that was coming in and you can't not mention um, Aideen like her accuracy uh, her free taking was outstanding apart from her hard work on the pitch like you know if a free a good free taker is is so valuable, you know, and there you you you're having to, you 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 could name a few clubs around that have 
an, an, an exemplary free taker. Our own uh, Eamon McGrath, you have Aideen, you have caught in clock in Clonolty and probably Jenny Grace and Burgess to Hara, you know, to name the ones offhand that I can think of immediately that mm. when you think of a good free taker, they're the ones that spring to mind. But I think I I I think um Bursley will get great heart from us. They're hungry, they're really hungry for a county final. You know, they want to go back up senior. They were senior and they want to go back up senior again, you know. Yeah, it's definitely you, going to be a cracking final in two weeks' yeah. time. But I suppose we'll move on now to Sunday to to, to the first of our two adult uh county finals with two uh champions for 2022 already with Clonty Rossmore and the junior B2. Uh, that game was at one o'clock on Sunday. And then the second game that day was uh, Money Gall, who um, bet um, Brian Bruce in the Junior A final. I suppose both games were a bit one-sided. You know, the Junior B2 final started off very one-sided. Clonty totally dominated. I think they went seven points to no score up. Um, largely down to, I thought, Teresa Burke and Claude Ryan in the middle of the field were excellent for him. Shannon Rovers just couldn't get the ball down their end of the pitch. But... Um, you know, in fairness, Shan Rovers to produce a much better second half. They actually outscored Clonty in the second half. And, uh, you know, the likes of Ali O'Kelly, young player there, I think she scored a goal and a point. Maeve Cahalan was very good for them, but some of their backs were excellent as well. Um, what's her name? Amanda Burke and Kelly Watson in defence there, I thought were outstanding. But in the end, it was Clonty. Um, you know, they just had a bit too much for Shan Rovers, like Sequiva, Quiva Quirk and... Ashleen, Eli, the captain, very good up front as well. So, Bridget, the Junior B2 competition, it's a great competition really for second teams, isn't it? Oh, I think it's excellent because, you you know, you have clubs there that have, have, have a lot of players. And, like, if you're fielding one team and you have 40 players or even 30, 35 players at your disposal, there's a lot of girls won't won't get games. And... um. It, it means they're hurt. You, you have all your players hurting all the time. And particularly for the younger girls that maybe just aren't um, ready for um, a senior um, game yet. It, it, it bloods them, to want to use a better word, um, to, you know, it gets them, it gets them used to the, the, the adult level without, you know, without having it to be a senior match, you know, because, um, the you know, the intensity in a senior game is so much different. But, like, to see young girls out there, um, you know, like the Clinology team had a real mix of, you know, girls, um, come, like you saw mother and daughter were on the field. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. Um, Ashley, um, yeah, Ashley Eli and her daughter. Yeah. Eli, yeah, and her daughter. Like that's like that's there's, there's, there's such a bond there. Like that's fantastic. And like I, the Silver Mines had a, had a junior B as well and a uh, junior B two, and um, uh, like um, uh, Sharon Rovers as well. Like it's great because it it means there's more girls can come over with that that would probably pack it in because they're not they're not getting games. Because you can't you can't play everybody, you know. And yeah. I think it's, it's it's a tremendous competition, you know. Fantastic competition, and Clonty, I suppose, yeah. deserving winners this year. They were very yeah. good throughout the championship. David, I suppose Clonty winning that game um on Saturday, a lot of girls, I think most of the panel make up the panel for their senior team as well. They all train together. I know they've separate managers, but all being coached together. And do you know is that a boost that will stand to them going into the senior final maybe this weekend? You can't beat a, a winning feeling in a camp. You know, it's, it's it's great to be able to bring silverware back to the, the parish and let the senior girls see what it means to win a county final above in the rag. So, you know, I would say their seniors have looked at last week and, and, and seen what glory can bring to the parish and probably say to themselves, this has to be our opportunity on, on this coming Saturday. And I, I just feel that, you know, if County are going to ever win one, it's going to have to be this this, this weekend because if they don't, you know, it's going to be the fourth in a row where they'd have to come back and try and win a county final after losing three. And that's very hard to keep doing. If you win, you'll always come back. You'll find it easier next February to put on the boots and the, the scarves and the socks and get going again. But if you keep getting to the final stage and you keep losing, it gets a little bit harder every year to, to make that want and that commitment to, to go back to the field. So certainly the, the juniors winning and bringing that feeling back to the parish and to training probably tonight or tomorrow night will certainly help. But... Their seniors are low on the back of their own mind that, you know, what went on last weekend, 
you know, they still have their own job to do regardless whether the juniors won or not. And I, I just feel that if they are to do it, it'll have to be this weekend. You know, I, I, I still think Drum are probably the strongest on paper, but you know, real, realistically, paper doesn't deci decide any county final. It's all on the day. And, you know, if any team can turn up and produce a performance in county final day, it's definitely Drum and Inch to have a, a, a great spread of talent all over the field. But, you know, I'm kind of sticking my neck in the line that say maybe this might be Clanounty's year. But at the same time, I say that with no great confidence because, you know, drum or drum, they're so used to playing on the big stages, Munster finals, all Ireland semi finals, county finals. So while the junior final will help County Ross more, the seniors know the back of their own mind that you know this they have to do it this Saturday themselves regardless of what went down in that junior final and um you know it's going to be a cracker and I'm looking forward to it and uh you know let the best team win and the best team has been drummed the last two years so it's up to Canouty to come back now this year and uh take one back off drum and and in their cycle as tip champions and maybe start their own era of dominance so that's what they're playing for on Saturday and I, I wish the best uh, the best team will win and uh, the, the both of them the best to look. And they were very interesting there. You touched on about coming back and, and, and winning a county title. Um, I suppose that has been Money Gall's story. You know, they were beaten last year in a in the junior A final against Borland Duella. They came back this year stronger, got players back like to Julie Kelly and, and Breed Ryan who played with them before. Very impressive, I have to say, in the final uh on Sunday, terrible conditions. They were a bit nervy, I suppose, in the opening quarter and went behind for a goal to, to Brian Baruse, but after that, they totally dominated. Didn't they? Yeah, well, I suppose the, the only shining light for Brian Brews was the opening goal from the penalty, really. That was kind of as good as it got, really, for them. Um, you know, Money Gall had three or four wides at the very start of the game. I looked a bit nervous. And I suppose it's only when the Brian Brew penalty went in that they actually settled into the game. And Caitlin Tracy found her accuracy from freeze. But like Brian Brews, unfortunately, kind of concentrated more on trying to stop Money Gall the far end of the field rather than trying to score the opposite end of the field. And in fairness, their backs and goalkeeper, like their goalkeeper, Alana Walsh, made some fantastic saves. And, you know, I'd circle Sean Amara here as someone who was very good centre back for them. And in fairness, all their seven backs back the game need to keep their side in, in, in the game. But unfortunately, when they hit the ball up, then, you know, they were hitting it just straight to Mary and Julie. And unfortunately, the ball was coming straight back down the top of them. And, you know, they, they did very well for long periods to keep Money Gall at bay. Like, there was only seven points in it at half time, But, you know, you know, eventually yourself, if the ball keeps coming down on top of you, your, you know, your confidence or your concentration is eventually going to break. And, you know, Money Gall in the second half really pushed on. And, you know, I just think myself, Money Gall are probably playing a level below what they should be. I, I, I After watching the two games on, um, on Saturday in the Intermediate, I, I just commented to Bridget on, on Sunday during the game that I, I felt Money Gall would give any of those four teams are rattled if they could keep this group of players together going forward, like Maria Tihan is outstanding, you know, Katrina Dohan, um, Rona Keneally came in from the start and scored a goal in three points, you know, um, Caitlin Tracy, as I've already mentioned, Neve Larkin, you know, Lauren Maher, Mary Ryan, they have some fantastic players, so they have a set of forwards there that it's good as, as anything that's above them in the intermediate grade, so certainly if they can keep... Uh, a panel of players together, Money Gall certainly will give the intermediate the right rattle, rattle next year. But as for Brian Bruce, look, we, we commented in, in, uh, live in the game on, on Sunday. It was a great achievement for them to get that far. Um, just probably ran into a team that was probably further down the line, but certainly it was a, a great achievement for a club like Brian Bruce to be in a junior A final. And we just commented while the presentation was going on on Saturday how young the Brian Bruce girls looked when they took off their helmets and they were standing there in front of us watching the Money Gall girls claim the, the cup. So certainly they have a big future ahead of them and uh, they have some fine hurlers, but they probably just need to spend a bit more time in junior A developing themselves more physically and, and their hurling. And who knows, in another year or two's time when they get back to this stage again, I have no doubt that with the experience that they, they suffered last weekend, it will make them even stronger. And, you know, if they get back to that final, then they'll be itching to try and move up the grades. But certainly, I think on Sunday, the best team won the money goal. But Brian Bruce, in fairness, never give up. We're totally outclassed, but they stayed back into the bitter end. And as a club, they deserve great praise for that. They have their girls brought up in the right manner to, to stay back into the final whistle, at least. Very good. And Bridget, I'm sure you'll agree with everything David has said there. But I thought uh, I thought it was lovely to see Mary Ryan, I suppose. I'm big fans of Mary Ryan here in the podcast. You know, she's a fantastic servant for Tipperary Camogie and obviously, uh, you know, a brilliant club player. But I suppose wouldn't have that many medals, you know, in her collection. And, you know, she was absolutely thrilled at the final whistle to, to, find, to oh, have yeah. a medal, you know. 
like like she's she's an outstanding player and she's she's she plays outstanding for both club and county you know and she's a real money goal girl you know like she 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 died on her feet for money goal and I was so delighted for her like because you know she has not too many county medals to her name uh, at adult level you know I'd say and um you know like when she played senior with money goal you know so like I don't think myself to be it won't be too long before they're back up at senior level. I think, as David said there, they'll give the intermediate a right good rattle next year. You know, I'd say they were hurt from being beaten by, you know, a very good Borland team last year. And um, I think um, they have a, a, um, a bigger panel this year than I've seen them with for a while, you know. And, you know, they've, you know, they're bringing, they're bringing in subs there like that are well able to hurl as well, you know. Mm-hmm. and. You know, as, as David mentioned, you you have you have really good players in every line. And I think, you know, um Mary, Julie, uh, and Breed, especially and Marie, they they the the, t- the, p- the team is kind of built around them, you know, and and I think um you know you've Stephanie Kenny then full back who's who had a tremendous game as well yesterday, you know. Yeah, like, and, and Laura Manor actually got player of the match, you know, a player that's yeah, about her job. Different. Every t- every time and but I thought she got on the, the world of ball the last time you know as yeah. Mary Ryan was great to pick her out but she seemed to be in space the whole time and 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 you know I thought she contributed massively yeah. to their to their win yeah and deserved deserved player of the match she was she was she was always where you wanted her to be as I say you know so yeah they were they were exceptionally good yesterday you know it was unfortunate for for Brian Bruce because they're not a bad team at all you don't get to a county final. Uh, unless you're a good team and um as we said they they were so young they're so young like they're a very young team so i'd have great hope for them in the future i hope they stay together and stay playing you know yeah no doubt they'll be back again i think they're only i think they only won the junior b maybe two years ago so they're not that long yeah. at, at junior a so they'll have a bright future uh speaking of junior b um we also we have the junior b county final coming up this Sunday at 2.30 in the County Camogie Grounds of Rag, McCarkey Boroughs versus Portrow. Um, McCarkey beating St. Cronin's or Ross Gray uh, in the semi-final at the weekend, had a big win over them. I suppose similar to, to Moneygall, McCarkey, I suppose, are many people's favourites for this competition. Hot favourites really having um, got to the final last year, lost out to Laura. They were down, I think it was Emma Sullivan was injured that day and a couple of other players like Kate Ralph and and Sarah Corkin have come up from the underage onto the team this year and looking very strong. Um, but like Money God, you know they have they have to live up to the favourite tag. They have to turn up on the on the day and, and give a good performance. But Bridget Portro, from what you know of Portro, if there's any team that could beat McCarkey that could stop them, you know they're on a bit of a roll there at the moment in the championship. Have beaten everybody, but if there's any team that could stop them, I think Portro could be the team. I think so too because. Um... I, you know, you've only to look at some of the, the players they have, like Tisha Halloran is, is there with um, Portrou, you have Michelle O'Halloran, um, Grace Mulrooney, you know, Claire O'Brien. Um, I know Claire O'Brien played Intercounty at under 16 when I was involved with them, and she's a really good player. Um, you have, um, you know, like Tisha plays centre back and she, she just manages the whole thing from there. Like she's, as you know, we've we've experienced her when she played with Burgess O'Hara. She's she's exceptional, you know. But like you have you have, you have players there that are are well able to you know take their scores from play. They're not there's they're not totally dependent up front on anybody, which I think is a really good thing. That they're 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 they spread it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they met in the group stages, McCarthy and Portro, um McCarthy but everyone in their group and Put up a big score, you know, 17, 20 points in some games. But uh, against Portro, uh, Portro came second in the group. The only game they lost was to McCarkey. It was 111 to five points. So they were able to kind of contain McCarkey. You know, they didn't run away with it or by any means. It was a competitive game. But I suppose they'd have to score more than five points if, if, if they're to beat him on Sunday. Oh, they will, yeah. And like, that's a slick um, outfit in McCarkey as well. They have some... They have some um genius. There's some great players there, like and as you mentioned earlier, like a couple of, you know, Sarah Cochran and Kate Ralph coming up from 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 underage. Like you have um Katrina Walsh, you have Quivo Mara, a few of them like there, and um 
uh, Emma Sullivan. Like, yeah, you know, good players, you know. Um, Watched them, uh, I think it was January by the time it was played, the, the minor, say, last year's minor B final. Um, they were very good. The best Shannon Rovers, a lot of them Shannon Rovers players were playing intermediate the weekend, and we'll see a lot of the the McCarkey Burris player minor players playing this weekend, like Molly O'Dwyer and the goals, Alicia Kearney. Um, so they're very good. They're looking very strong at minor again this year yeah. as well. Um, I suppose David, you're double jobbing at the moment. You're you're giving us a handout with the, the PR and the commentary in the stream, but obviously you're ratified recently as new to Brewery Junior Manager and. Have you been impressed with what you've seen so far in the last couple of weekends? I certainly have, uh, to be honest with you, um, Geraldine. I certainly have. Um, look, I suppose our goal is, as a manager team is quite simple. We want to win Munster and, and All-Ireland glory. That's the right reason why we're there. That's the reason why we look for the job. Um, and certainly I've been encouraged uh, the last couple of weekends. You know, I'm coming home from games there with match programmes and circles around a lot of girls' names of people who have impressed me over the course of the last couple of weeks. So... Certainly as a managing team, we're, we're getting to games, we're keeping an eye out on everyone, we're keeping an open mind, you know, we're not just shutting it down to the players who were there last year, we're, we're broadening our horizons to all 31 adult teams that's in, in the county to, to get the best of every club player into the county set up and have a look at them at least anyway and pick the best panel from there because... I think there has been a problem maybe with um, girls maybe committing to the junior thing the last couple of years. So we're hoping to change that, you know, we're hoping that obviously Dennis will have first pick on the, the best 30 players in, in the county. But we're hoping to get the next 30 players in with us as well. And, you know, we're hoping to get, give this a right good rattle this year. And we will be difficult in the league. We're probably playing teams that's of a higher level than us. But certainly when it comes to, you know, Munster glory and All-Ireland glory, we feel as a manager team as a county that Tipperary should definitely be in with a shout there of, of, of taking those honours or at least competing for them anyway. So the last couple of weekends has certainly opened our eyes to, to talent that is there. And, you know, we hope that our clubs will encourage our players to, to get on board with the juniors when asked and that we can get a good panel together, a good honest panel and get a temporary jersey on them and instill a bit of pride and heart into it and get a plan together and hopefully bring back some silverware before the end of the year, at least. Anyway. Brilliant stuff, David. Um, and like I said, has been, there's been lots of talent on display the last few weekends and no doubt there'll be plenty of action again this weekend and and uh, plenty of players putting their hands up for county panels. But I suppose the only thing they'll have on their mind this weekend is, is winning club honours first. Uh, and uh, we have on Saturday the Senior Shield final is happening as well. That game is at 12.30, uh, Silver Mines uh, versus Nina Aroak. Then at 3 o'clock we have Drummond Inch and Clone to Rossmore, obviously, that's the FBD Insurance Senior Championship final um, at three o'clock on the Saturday. On Sunday, then the Junior A Shield final, Holy Cross Valley Cal versus Templemore. That game is thrown in at 11 a.m. And then the big one then is the Junior B County final, the Carkey Burris versus Port Row at 2.30 p.m. So both the Senior final, Drum and Clonty, and the Carkey and Port Row will be both streamed live on the Tipperary Camogie YouTube channel, which is great for anyone that can't go, but I really would recommend everyone to get to the County Camogie grounds this weekend. Um, we had fantastic crowds actually just gone the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and we're hoping for a really good crowd again this weekend. Uh, if you're Even if you're a neutral, um, you should definitely get going to, to the County grounds. Uh, it's the place to be this Saturday and Sunday to watch those games, the Shield, Senior Shield final, and the senior championship final and obviously the junior a shield final and the junior b uh final all happening this weekend so just to wish all the clubs the best luck and thank bridge and david for joining me to look back on all the action and uh, look ahead to this week's action so that's all for this week's uh, episode we hope you enjoyed it and if you did make sure to give us a like and subscribe to our youtube channel